Welcome to this video on the basics of radiative scattering. In a previous video where we discussed radiative transport, we had the picture of some astrophysical source of light radiating light towards us as an observer over here and passing through some intervening medium along the way. And we described the radiation coming through as a specific intensity and we use the radiative transport equation to tell us how that specific intensity changed through this medium on its way to us. We ended up with a differential equation that said that the change in specific intensity along this path S is equal to the emissivity of that medium, so how many photons are injected into this line of sight as we pass through the cloud, minus the extinction which is the number of photons taken out of commission by being absorbed by the medium through this extinction coefficient here. And this was called our radiative transport equation. So today we're gonna to talk about scattering as a special case of this radiative transport equation. So the idea with scattering is that this medium here is made up of scatterers, and each of these scatterers, when struck by a photon, will displace that photon either out of the line of sight, or a scatterer can work by taking light that was out of our line of sight, let's say a photon was coming down through this cloud, and scattering it back into our line of sight this direction. So scattering can do two things. It can remove photons from our line of sight, or it can add photons to our line of sight. But if you think about it, this removing photons from the perspective of an observer really isn't any different than extinction. But how do we add photons to our line of sight? Well, logically, you look to our emissivity here, as something that injects photons into our line of sight. But scattering is a little bit different. It's like emissivity, but it depends on how much radiation is shining into our cloud from other directions, which we'll call our ambient radiation. And what do we mean by ambient radiation? We just mean that if we have a scatterer here, we can have light rays, these specific intensity, coming in from all sorts of different directions here. And all can potentially be scattered into our line of sight towards an observer by the scatterer. So we start to care about our intensity in any direction shining on our scatterer, and we care about the cross-section for scattering that light into the line of sight of our observer. So this scattering coefficient potentially can be a function of direction. So n hat here describes all the different directions that light could be coming in from. And ultimately, the amount of light that we receive here at the observer from the single scatterer is going to be the integral of the radiation coming in from all different directions times the cross-section for scattering in each of those directions. So in fact, we can define an effective emissivity for scattering that is the integral of the intensity coming in from all different directions times the cross-section for scattering that light into our line of sight, and we can integrate this over all the solid angles over which light can be coming in at. But we need to get our units right here. So we have a specific intensity here, which had units of ergs per second per hertz per centimeter squared per solid angle. We multiplied it by something that has units of centimeters squared, and we integrated over a solid angle, omega. We know that our scattering coefficient is going to have units of ergs per second per hertz per centimeter cubed per solid angle. That centimeter cubed came from the fact that we are taking the derivative of specific intensity with respect to a distance, which gives us an extra length in the bottom. Well, to get our units to work out here, we can easily undo our integral over solid angle by dividing out over the total solid angles that we integrated over, which is just 4 pi. So we've canceled out our integral over solid angle. Now we just need to work on the fact that we added a unit of area to scattering. And as you can see here, with our centimeter squareds canceling on the right-hand side, we're really just off by a factor of centimeter cubed over here, which might make you suspect that there's a volume that we need to deal with. And in fact, the emissivity from scattering definitely has to depend on how many scatterers we have out here. So in order to get our factor of volume down here in the bottom, we should really be multiplying by the number of density of scatterers here. And I'm going to use n because that's our typical symbol for number density. I don't want you to confuse this n right here, which is number density, with this n over here, which is a direction that's being integrated over in our integral over solid angle. So coming back to scattering as a combination of removing photons and adding photons, we can define an effective emissivity of scattering as a number density times a cross-section for scattering times, and I'm going to invent a symbol here, capital J nu, 
where capital J nu is defined to be the average around the whole sphere of our intensity field. Now just to clarify, I've gone ahead just to simplify our lives and separated out my cross section for scattering here. I've taken it out of the integral. And by doing so, I've made an, a simplifying assumption here that the cross section for scattering is not direction dependent. In practice, the scattering cross section may be direction dependent, in which case it needs to be inside the integral. But to help simplify things, I've made this assumption here in writing down this equation. So to summarize here, we've worked out that in order to include scattering in our radiative transport equation, we can model scattering as a process that both removes photons from the line of sight with an effective extinction for scattering with alpha sub nu and sources photons into the line of sight by scattering them in from other directions. And we can take care of that with an effective emissivity J nu for scattering. And we worked out that J nu for scattering depends on the number density of scatterers, the cross section for scattering, and the ambient radiation field capital J sub nu, where capital J sub nu is just the spherically averaged specific intensity I sub nu. So in later lectures, we'll work out how the cross-section, sigma, can depend on the properties of the scatterer. But for now, this is how we treat scattering in the radiative transport equation.